Gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome the man who solemnly swears he is up to no good, the one, the only, Gino Deville! Ooh! Hello there, good morning, good morning world, wherever you are in the world. And uh, yeah, it's time for another Genomania where we, uh, we, you know, we, we tackle the magical problems of the magical world, as it were. And today, wow, we got so much in store in today's show. I don't know where to start. So I think I will. I'll start by bringing my partner in crime to the stage. The one, the only, the incredibly sexy, the incredibly debonair, the man of mystery himself. <laughs> or the man of manipulationary mystery himself, <laughs> Mr. JSB. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy now, cowboy. Down, cowboy. Down, cowboy. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Wow, hang on a bit. What time is it over there in Australia? It's like lunchtime, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, it depends on when you have lunch. Just after one o'clock. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, you see, because for me, of course, it's incredibly early here in China. I don't have that much energy. <laughs> wow. How, how are you doing, my friend? Are you well? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. awesome. Great to see you. I hear you're Thank off you. on another performing adventure uh, this weekend. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's Christmas time, so I took a few shows in, and uh, I fly tomorrow up to a place up in the north of China, over on the northwest of China, called Chengdu. And what's super about Chengdu is it's where the pandas live. Woo! So, yeah, it's, I call it Panda Land. Uh, it's snowing up there at the moment, which I can do without. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really, really nice place. And it's full of pandas. They're everywhere, you know, absolutely everywhere. You know, everyone's got a neighbor who's a panda. You know, it's, they're just walking in <laughs> the streets. That's so cool. Real yeah, life pandas. No, that's, 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 that's not true. They don't walk in the streets. Um, but yeah, there's... Uh, in fun, it's funny, um, you read a lot in the newspapers about China from the Western media and it's all utter cock. They haven't got a clue. You know, it's so anti, 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 and I'm certainly not getting political. But one of the things that has happened I over the years. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Excuse well, me. yeah, very much so. <laughs> but uh, it's really interesting because 
20 years ago when I first came to China and I first went up to there, you can go to the panda zoos, you know, and you can you can slip the little, uh, you know, the panda trainers, you know, a little bit of pocket money and they will take you in and you can hold a baby panda and have photos taken with it. And it was so cute. It's so lovely. And I, I love to try and find one of me, me, me photos when I did it. But of course, now here we are in China, they've discovered capitalism and now it's a featured thing there are posters <laughs> and there are billboards and the price has gone why 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 up now so you know anybody turns around and says oh you're china communism people you know starving in the streets bollocks not true at all there's pandas <laughs> driving porsche KNs around for goodness sake <laughs> pandas <laughs> driving their porsche <laughs> Well, well, it's kind of you know, funny we're... because I'm in the land of the koala, which is the, like the other cutest little everyone loves animal, you know, so we should yeah. have something where I'm doing the koala thing and taking the photos and you're taking the panda thing and we, you know, compare baby photos. <laughs> this is very true. But do you know, do you know, there's an interesting similarity between the Chinese panda and the Australian koala bear. As you say, they are the, both the cutest, cutest things in the world. However, with both species, if you get within six inches of their mouth, they will bite your face off. Yeah, they, so, yeah, they look cute, but they, yeah, these <laughs> it belies their true nature. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they will. They're literally. Oh, you are. To, ah, ah, you know. ah. <laughs> well, everything will kill so, you in Australia. That's the fun of it. <laughs> it keeps oh, all those. Don't you know. Get me started. <laughs> You know, I mean, I know, I know you're not native to the land. And I, I used to have property in Australia over in Fremantle on the West Coast over in Perth. And I lived there for a while and I, I used to tour an awful lot with carnivals. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. So we'll do a quick Gino Showbiz story before we even kick into the show. It's great. So one year I'm on this show this carnival and I do this bunko booth show thing and uh, you know, I get bitten. We're unloading the carnival and I get bitten by the deadly red back spider. So there I am and I'm running around this carnival and I'm screaming, flapping my hands in the air like a little girl that I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And then you've got all these true blue Aussie carny folk going, shut up, Tom. And it was just like, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. It's like, nah, mate. No, you're not. You're just going to feel a bit crook for three days. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> and sure enough, I went off to the hospital and, you know, this Aussie doctor and stuff, you know, said, well, what's the matter? I said, I've been bitten by a red back. I'm going to die. And he says, shut up. And what I realized at that moment is that Australian advertising but tourism towards the English is the best in the world. They want to keep us out. And what better <laughs> way of keeping us out? By telling us that every single thing there is going to kill us instantly. So we are raised as Brits <laughs> that everything's going to kill us. No. Yes, you do have the most dangerous <laughs> shit in the world there. But, you know, I, I honestly thought I was going to die from this red back bite. But sure enough, I just felt a bit ill for three days. And of course, down where you are, though, in Sydney area, ooh, the funnel back. Way. That's a scary mofo. Yeah, it, but it's this funny, as you said, it's so overhyped. I mean, yeah. I've been living here in in the bush and in sort of in the, the town. And I see red backs all the time. And I'm like, I name them. I'm like. Hello, you're George. You're George. You hang out, and they don't come out of their webs. I mean, they're they're part of the ecosystem. I yes, never yes. use poisons. I will only kill them if they clearly are getting in a space that I have to be in, and I kind of have to go, dude. I'm sorry. No, absolutely, I can't absolutely, move them, absolutely. I dispatch them, but it's the very last yeah. resort. So very rarely will I kill any animal. One time I had to kill a big king brown snake that kept coming into the yard. And we got really yeah. aggressive, and I had the kids out, and I finally went, all right, that's where he, he wouldn't leave. He decided he wanted to Ooh. live there, and I finally had to, unfortunately. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, times I've but spent down in that, Sydney. 
you know? Yeah. I mean, times we've been down in Sydney, you've got that Sydney funnel web spider. And yeah, that is an aggressive too. spider. Yeah. Yeah, you've got, yeah. that's an aggressive spider. So therefore, you know, they'll go for you and stuff. But again, well, you live you within- If you put your finger in the funnel, you're attacking yeah. it. It's like going in the water with the shark. The sharks don't bother me. I stay out of the ocean. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Rew. yes. laughs> you know, before, before I left Australia and came to China, they were trying to bring in a bill over in Australia, in Western Australia, that surfers and swimmers, um, and well, man, if you will, were allowed to kill sharks on sight because, and their reason for this bill was, they were a danger to swimmers. It's like, what the? Where do you think they live? It's yeah. kind of like, it's not them coming into our house. It's not like you got a big sharky shark walking into your house on its dorsal back fins. Yeah. We're in their <laughs> home, you know? It's, so anyway, very crazy. But okay. anyway, totally, totally <laughs> off topic of magic. Hey, listen, while I give the intro, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on. While I give, just have a fiddle with your mic cable, Jay. You've got a little bit of a crack coming on your mic cable oh dear and you're only coming yeah, out the one mic is having so... some issues i got a bad yeah, just feeling a i think the mic it's probably oh, that's back better. here that's better okay that's better that's cool okay. right well anyway what's going on so i tell you what while you have a little nose at that i'll uh, i'll tell everybody what is going on so let me mm -hmm. jump to my notes right well and uh, yeah let's talk about stuff that's more important than uh, sharky shark and red back spiders and stuff so the omc wow we've got some heavy hitters in the competition now it's absolutely awesome but we are on the final countdown we're on the final legs uh today is the Excuse me. The 9th of December, the cutoff for entries is on the 20th. So that is only 11 days to go. Then our three superstar judges will be deep diving into the uh, into all the entries. And wow, they've really got their work cut out for them. So, uh, yeah, make sure you get your entries in before the 20th. Again, if you're not familiar, head over to the OMC group, watch the promo video. I won't run it again today here. Um, and uh, basically the only rules are, there are no rules, except make sure your entry is less than two and a half minutes long. Otherwise our poor judges will have no life. So, uh, yep, so the cutoff is the 20th of December. The judges will do their judgy judgy thing and the grand prize winner will be announced on the 1st of January, 2022. So that's what's going on there with the OMC. Um, what else is going on? Right, um, Jay sometime very soon will tell us some groovy stuff that he's involved with. But before we go there, let me just tell you about uh, Ding Dong Merrily on High. It's Christmas time again. <sighs> Yes, indeed. And over at devillemagic.net, we, of course, are going to be doing something rather groovy for Christmas and having a bit of fun at the same time. If you do not already know, at Deville Magic, we have a magic quiz and you need to get uh, all the questions correct. You need to get 100% correct in the allotted time limit of five minutes and you will win a store-wide discount of 20%. Well, that particular quiz has proved to be rather hard and uh, even some of the world's most knowledgeable magic aficionados, as it were, have struggled to get 20. In fact, no one's ever done it yet. And I must admit, I'm quite pleased with myself because I created it and that's a tough quiz. But for Christmas, I've made a much, much, much easier one for you. It's uh, only 10 questions. You need to get 100% correct in the three minute time uh, allocation, if you will. And you will get 20% off a store wide discount as many times as you want up until the 26th of December. Yes, indeed, uh, I'm English. So that would be my boxing day. So 20% off, and that is running now. If you just head over to devillemagic.net, you will see on the front page access to the Christmas quiz, and it's a much easier one. So have some fun with that. Uh, what else have I got to tell you? Oh yes, the DeVille Magic Library. Uh, if you tuned in last week, 
uh, you may remember me saying that something that really bugs me, it really does, is people profiteering on something that should be there for free. Of course, everybody's in business to make money, but when something is free and people come in and try and, you know, start profiteering on it, then it becomes just a scam. Now, across the internet, there are countless places to download all old, I should say, old out of print magic books, really, really old stuff, stuff that the copyright is no longer valid. It becomes what's called a public license copyright or something like that. Mm. And you can download this stuff for free. Well, people are going around the internet, taking piles of it, putting it together, zipping it up, calling it some name, the mega magic bundle, and they're trying to sell it. Well, that really pees me off. So over at DeVille Magic, on the inside after login, we've always had a VIP library for select customers. I have upgraded everybody to that select customer. So the library is available to anybody. I add as many as I've got time. Right now, there are about, there's about over 100 downloadable PDF magic books some long long out of print and the gold that's in there is unbelievable some more modern stuff that's gone out of print such as bobo's modern coin magic the absolute bible now even though that is still available in print form in a book form it's actually on what's called a public license now so it's there for download and it's absolutely free so head over to devillemagic.net register once you've registered, log in and you will see the link that says the library. And in the last two days, I've added Bobo's. I've added books by Anaman. I've added books by one of my all time personal heroes. And I've built my career around him. The one and the only, the great Ed Marlowe. I've put a load of Marlowe books up there. So it's all there, ready for download. And it's totally free. It's free today and it's free forever. So uh, go and have a look at that. Um, so without that, that's kind of like my my catch up on stuff over at Deville Magic. So Jay, 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 do you want to come back to the stage? Hello, Sim Salabim. Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort Oosh. of come back to that. That's an extraordinary. Yeah, I'm gonna just sort of re-emphasize that. Now we're we're uh, streaming to the Muggle Friendly, but the Academy of oh. Illusions. So this is for all aspiring magicians, whether you're beginner or expert. And oh. you know, uh, just like you're saying with the books, we're saying we're trying to give as much of this and the information without charge. But I tell you what, access to that library is just it's mind-boggling that anyone now anywhere in the world, they money no longer is an option. Because that's always it. The, the disparity between someone who has the money to get the books versus the one who does not. I always thought that, you know, that's a bit of unfair. And now you've basically leveled the playing field for any beginner, anyone who wants to up their skills to say, all right, I'm going to learn Marlowe, but I can't afford this or whatever. Phenomenal. So this becomes just so yeah. everyone knows, it, it, part of the tie between the Academy of Illusions and DeVille Magic is that now this is the official library of the uh, the Academy. And now, as he said, now we're adding to the over 100 of these all free. So extraordinary yeah. uh, uh, value uh, simply by taking the time to head over there and grab them, download them, and read them. Yeah. Awesome. And Good I will you, say now... In my personal collection of this, now I will state I will state this: if you download a book and it's a book that is still available in print, go and buy it. Now, okay, why? Why go and buy it? The copyright, the creator won't read and get anything from it because most of the creators are long time past. Uh, of course, the dealer will, you know, take profit from it. But what's more, it's lovely to have a genuine book magic collection. If you are involved in our art, there is nothing, nothing better. I mean, our good friend of us, the fabulous, fabulous uh, manipulator, Sean McCree, who is very, very active on most of the uh, Facebook groups, his magic library is second to none. I mean, it's mm. wonderful, you know? And the thing is the joy on a, a student of magic's face when you're sitting in your library and you're surrounded by your genuine books, it's nice. 
Yeah. So it's it's much nicer than looking at it on a tablet, an iPad, or on a computer screen. But I personally, I have a very large, genuine book collection. But I personally, on the PDF downloads over the years, because I'm a bit of a techie, I'm a computer guy. Um, I have a collection of over three thousand PDF books. Now, some of them, some of them are still in copyright license i can't even quite i'm not even sure where they came from but i won't be sharing those but i still have a good thousand plus two thousand plus pdfs to put up so i'm going to drip feed them because it takes a little bit of time to upload them and add them to the catalog so uh just make sure you check back regularly because there's new ones all the time so now, Jay, uh, talking about new things, I yes. believe there's something new called the Magic Inn Convention coming up, yeah. which you're involved Let with. Let me quickly say a shout out to, to Hurley, to Roger and Hurley Watts. Uh, Hurley, hey. yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, I, 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 junior, yes, Junior. Hurley Waits. Hurley Waits Jr., dude. Hurley Waits Jr. Junior. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Great to see you. Thanks for checking in. Roger, my man, the official poet laureate of the Academy. Rick, the, the man, the man. Awesome. My, my great buddy, Rick. And, of course, Spike the wizard, uh, the wolf wizard. All of them have checked in, said hello. So cool. good on you. Every one of you. Yeah, the handful of stories from my end, uh, the Magic Inn convention has just been launched. That's not until it's an online convention one day uh, and it's not till February. So we're, but what they're doing is a half price, uh, half price, I think, for the next three weeks. So it's regularly $50 entrance U.S. Now it's, I think, 25 uh, great value when you consider that it's Sean Farquhar, myself, uh, Suzanne, uh, I don't even have the list, but it's a, I'll, I'll quickly, I mean, I've been posting it's it up. A... Yeah, really strong series. It's all lectures. It's performance, of course, within the lectures. Each, each one yep. will have performance, but a real got broad spectrum of top performers all the way from a professional film actor to uh, professional performers, all the, even the three sort of headline magicians uh, were very different. Each one of us, no matter what, are going to give you know top value for uh, for the money. So we'll keep you posted on that. More info, but if you want to jump on and grab an early bird ticket, they are it's a great price. And also think about a gift. You know, think about whether you're, you know, even with any of the downloads, of course, from DeVille Magic. But if you think, hey, that's a cool gift to, uh, again, a beginner magician or someone you want to get uh, more involved with, it's the Magic Inn Convention. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep posting right. info on that over the next few days. So keep you up to speed on that. Yeah. That, that's good. That is going to be because there, there is some I don't have the list in front of me as well. But I must admit, when I first saw the uh, the, 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 the first promo for it was just like, wow, that is a heavy hitter list. So now, yeah, there's no example, there's no lightweights. I mean, he chose five whoa. really yeah. strong. And I mean, it's like, whoa, <laughs> I mean, I mean any one say, of I mean, them could be easily considered worth the value of the entrance fee, which is that's what he says. Yeah. Too. He says, look, he wanted to. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I mean, every single person on that list and I, I'm struggling to remember exactly on the list as well, because it was it was a, it's a big, big list. But every single one of those. And it's as you say, it's totally diverse. It's a diverse list. There is nothing that's going to cross over like your stuff and Sean Farquhar stuff. You're both former world champion FISM champions, but your stuff could not be more different. You're both sleight of hand experts, masters, but you're so different. You, one's over there, one's over there. So it's going to be wow. You know, it's there yeah, it's going to be a big one. So Sean Farquhar, uh, now the, he's just listing her as Suzanne. So Suzanne, yeah. Uh, Simon Fisher Becker out of, I believe, one of the Norwegian countries. Now, I've just, I didn't know about him. I started researching him, uh, friended yeah. him on Facebook. Wow. Another one. I'm thinking oh, yeah. I'm going to watch his lecture. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah. And then Hackenberg, who is an actor. You see his, in, in this, this image, I'm looking at it, that's on my page. Uh, actually, what I'll do, again, I'll, I'll follow this up and, and put the links up. But that's one of the yeah. new kind of up, up and coming things. I'm planning a bunch of new live events uh, training, teaching. We talked about the Wonder Workshop certification course. 
Uh, yeah. I'm seriously, uh, that's definitely looking looking real positive for next month. Um, we're going to kick up the Zoom storming again. Um, I, I'm getting a lot of interest in the science magic. The latest trend, one of the other trends, uh, Jason Latimer, yes. I would I would argue he really got this going. I mean, I've been doing it for years, but I would give him credit for sort of pushing it on a, a bigger scale uh, amongst the magicians. And now a lot of other magicians are catching on. Uh, John Johnson, mm. I know, is doing a good friend. He's part bit of friend of the uh, Academy in the Art of Wonder. He's now doing a yeah. science magic show. Richard Pinner in the UK. Uh, hey, yes, top, been top, doing top, top, blog, yeah. top guy. I spent an hour with him the other day just giving him ideas because I've been doing it. I said, look, let's compare notes. I said, let me give you mm. a bunch of things that I'm doing. I threw all my quotes at him. Uh, and again, it's helping each other. Uh, but I'm thinking seriously about the, from the response I'm getting on personal sessions doing this i'm thinking of yes. doing an open like a zoom storming one or two uh where it's essentially science magic where i'm teaching but i'm yeah. also teaching you how to teach so anyone interested in science magic shows i've i mean i've spent the last couple of years developing mine so i've got a lot of real cool secrets that i have not shared except for individually yeah. on a couple of things well hey so how, if about, how about in, give me a thumbs up and we can book it i mean we can set that up anytime because i've got and you know it's it's fire fog lights oh my <laughs> I, I want to jump in uh, hands up in the yeah, air i want to jump in i really now i gotta tell you something interesting about that in a minute but the, how about a sound science magic instruction download as a new product well, I, I would like to think that, one. but I'm honestly seeing the numbers on the uh, the downloads, and it's not justifying the massive amount of time it's taken me to put into them. No, I'm no, being really enough. honest. Yeah. I'm I'm shifting yeah, my no, focus no, no. back to, to I as of next year. If you want to learn anything from me, you buy it. We yeah. do it live. Not that I won't yeah. do downloads, but they only have to yeah. come. So I want they come as a you know an add on. Yeah, and that's just out of simply watching how the numbers, I know the market's flooded a bit. Uh, yes. So I'm just having to look simply from the business point of view, but also how yeah, to get yeah, the yeah. word out. I mean, to produce, yes. the, spend all the work on a, on a download, and if only a half a dozen people buy it, you go, well, it would be better if I just taught it live in, in lectures and workshops, and then more people would have access to the information. So, you yes, know, we're, we're learning as we go. Yeah, and yeah, I know, very, you know very just good. having to adapt to you know, the, the situation, well, uh, but yeah. there's lots well, of it, information it that uh, I'm happy to share, like the Wonder Workshop yeah. info. It's just getting it out sure. to, the, to the people who can use it. Yeah. Well, an interesting thing about the science magic, because like you say, you're saying it over in the West at the moment, it is certainly becoming a bit of a, uh, uh, a, a bit of a, a bit of a new thing. Now there's been a few people that have been riding the science magic show wave for a number of years, like yourself. However, over here in China, and this is one of those little things that really bugs me because so many people point fingers in the magic world about, oh, copy, 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 copy. And when they use, seem to use the word copy and plagiarism in a sentence, 90% of the time they put China into that same sentence. Well, I can tell you now, I have at least 10 friends over here in China, because China's really big, who are all doing white lab coat huge science magic shows and have been doing for the last 10, 15 years. And it's a very standard thing over here, like bubble shows, science magic shows. You see them in these big variety lineups. You've got some magician, you've got a science magic show, and you know, they're all in the white lab coats and they've got huge things across the table and they're doing uh, what they call smoke guns, smoke ring guns out of a, some form of looking drum looking thing and it's a very standard thing over here and uh, so now of course what's going to happen is the more people that start doing science magic shows in the west then if they suddenly start seeing a chinese person doing a science magic show it's going to be oh they're China, copying it yeah. <laughs> no it's gone the other way or kind of <laughs> to a <laughs> <laughs> crazy man crazy it really bugs me and talking about things bugging me 
Oh, here we this go. Brings us, whoa, this brings us to... I'm doing my flipper, flipper claps. This brings us to a new segment that I want to bring in. Um, and uh, we're going to basically... It's a new segment. It's a little thing that... You see, Jay, of course, is Jay, and Gino is Gino, and we're very, very close friends, and we work together. However, of course, we have our own minds. We've both been in magic a lifetime, and we've go, both got a lifetime of experience. So I thought it would be rather interesting if we brought in this new controversial topic thing. So what's going to happen is this. It's basically called Jay and Gino knocking it on the head. And we will have a 10 minute discussion on a particular topic that might be bugging us in the magic world. We're certainly not going to go down as hardcore of some of the other Facebook people. I'm not going to mention any names, but you know who they are. Um, <laughs> but it's just something that has something that's popped up and bugged me this week. So I'm going to hit Jay with that question. So uh, before, without any further ado, I will run the intro credit and welcome for the premiere episode of Jay and Gino knocking it on the head. <laughs> and welcome. I am your host, Gino DeVille, and welcome to Knocking It On The Head. Uh, my co-host today and interviewee is the one and only Mr. Jay Scott Berry. Jay, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say none of this is rehearsed. I found out about this all. five minutes before we went live. So whatever oh, happens yes. here is completely... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Well, Jay, this is what's going to happen. I am going to bring up a 10-minute timer, and you and I are going to have a discussion on uh, an issue that's floating around in magic at the time, something that may be bugging us. Now, this week, I will ask the question and bring up the topic. Next week, you may, and, you know, we can bounce it off. So, without any further ado, here is the timer. Bosh, we're on a 10-minute timer now. Jay! <clears throat> Yes. What is your opinion on this? Something that's really bugging me. We all know in magic that items get copied. For example, someone creates a trick and then another dealer literally goes and steals it and creates and manufactures an exact copy. That is magic. It's happened forever. There's nothing we can do about it. That's just one of those things. But something else which is on the similar lines, but I'm interested to know your opinion on this. Right, so let me paint a picture for you. Most recently, there is a product that's on the market for out of Hong Kong by a friend of mine called Bond Lee, and it's become a very big seller. It's available from all the dealers. It's called Rubik's Wall. Now, what you get is literally you get a frame and you get a whole load of Rubik's Cubes if you're into cube magic, you can pass the cubes out, they get twisted up, twisted up, and then put back into this block wall, and then a prediction is made. The wall is turned around, and now there is an image made of those cubes on the back of a prediction. It's a great effect. It's simple. It's practical. It's great. It's customizable. It's awesome. It's a big seller. However, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to belittle him, but there's a young magician across the internet who has created a cube effect recently. He has come up with a version of this where using his cube, you literally just twist the cube into a shape. You block it onto another. On or you, you stack them up one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And there's no mystery. There's no all oh, turning it around in the end. There's no prediction. It suddenly makes an image. Now, he's even gone and called it Max Wall. It is an absolute ripoff of Bond Lee's Rubik's Wall in a, a lesser capacity. Now, I don't know if you've seen this floating about, Jay, and I know this is incredibly controversial, but I'm just curious to know what is your opinion? Basically, a product is on the market and somebody comes along and creates an inferior product and puts their own hat on it and their own stamp on it. Is this right? Is this wrong? What, what, what do you think? Well, I think you've brought up a very good point. 
Now, number one, uh, there's no question of the ethics. I have, to me, that's a very clear line. Uh, as a creator, and I'll, I'm going to jump on a bunch of points to write it. I often say, here's on one hand, the ones who are happy to knock things off and buy things knowingly knockoffs are very, very rarely the ones who are creators. Because when you've created it and invested the time, invested the energy, this is your baby. And not only do you hope to get some return, but there's a genuine, there, it, it, there's a, the rights, whether you call it copyright. It, it, in magic, you can't realistically, uh, um, you know, patent something, the cost versus, you know, the value. It's not realistic. But you sort of hope that people are going to be honest. And as you've said, the, the, the world of magic is rife with uh, dishonest people. Now, the other thing I always say is because I've been ripped off a lot, and I'll just quickly harken back to your, that everyone wants to jump on China. It's like, well, I've had, I've been ripped off from magicians all over the world, and I can list them as I say, I won't list names, but the, if I was to say how the quantity of, I feel, if, if you put a value on who I've been ripped off by, China doesn't even rank. I mean, I, there are some absolute well-knowns who still refuse to pay me any royalties on clearly knocked off, I mean, where I was clearly influential in the development. All right, so oh. that put aside, you got me started. Oh yeah, how's my timing? Here's the other thing I say. And then I say this, and I deal this you know, with music as well. I mean, as a creator, everything I do, I'm real. And I'm willing to create things and basically give it away. And then you kind of hope that people will somehow support you another way. But on the other hand, I tell people who are willing to buy rip-off items, like I, I often defend Lozander because he's a friend and someone will say, oh yeah, yeah, I've bought the cheap version. And I say, well, flat out, I say, the moment you do that, you'd forfeit the right to complain when someone rips something off from you. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, if someone breaks into your house, steals your television, you cannot complain because you are a thief. I, I flat out, and they're like, oh, what do you mean? I said, no, it's a you. You're willingly ripping off Lozander. He is the sole creator of this. You're willingly buying a knockoff item. Guess what? You're supporting a thief. So you have forfeited the right to complain when, and it will happen, when someone knocks your stuff off. And whether it's a magic Absolutely. product or whether Absolutely. it's this theoretical item, or you know, someone steals your car or whatever. I mean, that's extreme to make a point. But I am absolutely uh, disgusted with the low level of ethics in magic uh, that you see oh, yes. it all the time. In, as a, yes. as a, uh, an admin, I'm watching your time. I'm going to give you enough time. <laughs> as an admin oh, on, oh. on uh, a few of the sites, Magicians Only is one, the page. One of our first things is we instantly delete and remove members who are flogging knockoff items. It's like an instant, you know, Three, you don't get three strikes. You get one strike. You put a knockoff item, try to sell it, it you're gone. I mean, that, yeah. you have to, you've got to draw a line somewhere. And you're not going to stop yeah. the fact that it's getting knocked off. Good grief. The biggest companies in the world are getting knocked off. They've got the teams of lawyers. But you would of like course. to think that within the field of magic, there would be some level of honor among thieves, wouldn't you? Well, I want to jump in on just that comment that you said, because this is the thing that really cracks me up so much. <laughs> you speak in the Facebook groups about this topic and everybody is there posting with their white knight hat on, riding their white steed. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We agree. We have ethics. We would never do this. And as soon as they log off, they're the ones that are buying it. It is the biggest hypocritical thing ever. It's unbelievable. It's, you know, it's just crazy. Now, the person that I'm referring to on this, when he first started pumping this new product around, I did contact him personally. Um, OK, is it anything to do with me? No. However, as a creator, I feel strong about this sort of thing. And also, Bondly is a very dear friend of mine. He's in Hong Kong. I'm in China. We're an hour from each other. The Taiwan guy, whose name is Chinese, I won't be with him and say it, who also is the co-creator of the Rubik's Wall, is also a friend of mine. So this would be like, I'm basically 
I feel I'm standing up for my friends. And I spoke to this guy and I said, look, dude, do you really want to enter into the magic world as being known as a ripoff item? And his exact words were, oh, yes, I understand what you mean. Reputation is the most important thing. And then two days later, bosh, he's just chucking it out everywhere. And so this is why I don't really feel any any remorse on bringing this subject up now because I tried to deal with this privately and whoa, no, don't get it. No one, no one gives a shit. So it's All very right. interesting. All right. So now I'm, I'm going to give and uh, let give you a final say. This is obviously nothing new. And when there were physical products and I was out lecturing, I remember one time someone came up at the end, clearly had a knockoff DVD, a po you know, poorly copied case, everything else. He wanted me to sign it. And I'm just thinking the nerve of this guy. So I'm like, okay. And I wrote, you are a thief. <laughs> Jay Scott, <laughs> you know, back to him. Cool, cool. What do you mean? And I said, You're, it's a knockoff. I mean, here you could buy my stuff. So, I mean, it's half price it right in front of you. And no, you know, the, but what I find <laughs> fascinating is that they'll justify it. They don't, again, they haven't done the work. So uh, not they, I mean, the ones who are sort of of that mind, there's two mindsets. They'll justify the fact that they, well, it's okay. It should be in the public domain. Everything should be available. You say, well, okay, well then you create something and then I'll, I'll take it for free, right? Well, no, as soon as you turn the tables, everything changes, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Flipping it outside of this, but this is the thing that bugs me: is you get you get the 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 super rich of the world, you know, the Jeff Bezos of the world and the Elon Musk of the world and everything else, and people are slagging them off about how many billions and everything else they've got, yeah. but nobody does actually mention the fact that one they work really hard, and the fact that they do donate millions and millions of money to philanthropy and charities and everything else. Yeah. Nobody mentions that side of things. All they want to do is pull them down but i guarantee if anybody works that hard to get hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank you know well you're not going to necessarily flaunt it but you certainly 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 will feel proud of yourself because you work bloody hard and uh, well we're out of time we're out of time so <laughs> there it is the timer has come down <laughs> early so we're gonna, says, we're early says i'm enjoying this <laughs> yeah, we're gonna leave it there we're gonna leave it there but i think <laughs> I think this is. This, I think we can have this as a regular on the Genomania show. Well, because I could have so kept going, but I knew I had to shut up because our time. I like the timer thing because otherwise we'd be like, we. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, think, I have know, to it, say this last point, okay? Just as a quick thing. Okay. If you're complaining Ooh, about companies that sell knockoff items, but you're buying them, guess what? You're the problem. If you oh, yes. say, oh, those horrible this or Chinese or Russia or this, they're selling your things for cheap. I bought five of them. Yeah. Now, like, the, other the, the, well. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is as well. They're supporting the What? The other thing. Don't, say, don't I, complain I will... about Bezos if you're buying from Amazon. Is it like, ah. duh? <laughs> yes. That's exactly my point. Exactly my point. Yeah. And, okay, we, we've gone way over the time now, so I'm going to bring it back. And uh, we will we'll, we'll jump on another one uh, <laughs> in, next week. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, and, I, and I'm spent. Oh, I've got sweat on my brow. <laughs> but I will say, I will say this. I mean, we're, we're out of the time now, but we're still on this. I will say this from my ending point on this. The other thing, which is slightly a devil's advocate uh, uh, angle on this, the other thing is there's an awful lot of people that moan and groan about people's copies, except for the fact that a lot of the time, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, they're not copies. They are a different version of a similar product. And this is something that bugs me as well, because people get very confused. And I, I, have, to, you know, I have to say, look, get your magic knowledge. Now, let's just take for one second, finish this off on my side, Losander. Sadly, Losander created, and I say sadly from this point of view, he created his version of the floating table. It is superior in absolutely so many, so many ways, but also his routining of it, his routining of it. Um, 
Tommy Wonder used to do the same thing. He would bring out some of his stuff. You've done the same stuff. Now, you, for example, have created your cloaking device. No one would ever be interested in using a cloaking device. And I'm not even going to, because it's muggle friendly, we won't go into details of it. No one would be interested in using it if you didn't perform miracles with it. So you have set that benchmark. Now, Lysander's floating table is a similar thing. He's created a physical product that's absolutely amazing and it's been ripped off. But are every table in the world, floating table in the world, a rip off of Lysander? No. Ones no. that a rip off of his design are, but the floating right. table was around long before Lysander created his. 100 years now, or more. Exactly. Yes. I agree. Now. Yeah. Daytona Magic. Daytona Magic sells about seven different versions of Floating Table, only one of which is an authentic Lysander. So are all the others copies? No, they're just different designs of it. And this is what people don't realize. And yeah. I'd say learn your magic knowledge. Once you've got the knowledge, then you know, is that a copy? Is that a different model? And there is a big difference there, you know? Absolutely. No, very good point. Yeah. Thank you for making a, a, an intelligent rebuttal, because I will agree with you. It doesn't mean that, as you say, that everything's a knockoff just because it's a similar version or something in effect. Yeah. Okay, so Hurley yeah. is saying, I'm loving this. Uh, who can I check ideas with? That's a very good point. I mean, and then he says, what if I create something accidental that has been created? Oh. What, if I, what if I create something that has already been created accidentally? And then I have a well, fiberglass let's... one from India. So he's acknowledging he's got a, a, a version. Yeah. Uh, well, let, so, me, well let, let me. Go ahead. Yeah, go go ahead. You, go you ahead can then. address that. Okay. No, the handful just of that, questions just, all valid. Good, good on you, mate. Yeah, one, one little point. Okay, so um, who do you check with? Well, of course, there is no central database of magic. Uh, there are, luckily nowadays, we're living in the world of the web, and there are many, 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 many websites out there that have a huge amount of resources on this. For example, conjuring.org conjuring is a great one. It has, it's mainly for publications uh, and a lot of the well-known effects. They've got who created it. But what I tend to do, what personally I tend to do, and I know Jay the same, uh, there's certain people as creators, in the magic world, everybody knows everybody. And so therefore, most people that are very heavily in the magic world, they know someone that probably has a more knowledge on one particular item than you do. So whenever I create a card gimmick, for example, some of my card gimmicks, I speak to a number of people. Now, for example, Hondo out of Taiwan, who created Intersection, he creates all sorts of card gimmicks. He's a young guy, but he also has a huge amount of knowledge. Sean McCree on card effects, Paul Gordon on card effects. These people that are very readily accessible on the internet, they have a huge, huge life knowledge of things. So it's always good to check you know, with yeah. other people, you know, you just, it's impossible to know everything. You just can't. Um, mm -hmm. Now, one other thing that I will answer on this thing about what happens if you create something that you've already, has already been created. Well, uh, a few weeks ago, I created, uh, I created, ooh, uh, I, I created, I did on the Genome Mania for Jay, one of my commercial effects called the pig trick. And it's this little molding clay and you, it makes a prediction. Well, I won't go into the method, but a part of the method, when I created it a few years ago, um, I showed it to a friend of mine and he said, oh, oh, this method is already out there. And it turned out that there's an American by the name of Jonathan Friedman, who is a fabulous creator and author of books. He had come up with a principle very similar to what I had created. So I got in touch with Jonathan and I showed him mine and he we talked about his da, 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 da. and what has happened is when I release my pig trick because it's a physical prop when I release my big pig trick I will be paying him a portion of the profits for the element in there because we established that who came up with it first 
not important, who put it out there on the market first that is really the more important factor. So now that's pure ethical honesty from me. I don't have to in any way. And he could call me afterwards and say, hey, Gino, but that's not how I'm made. So I've got a deal set up in place with him when we release it later. He's happy. I'm happy. Everything's happy. And it's, you know, it's clean. So that's what I do. If I come up with something that's already out there, um, that's one way of dealing with it. I agree. Now, I'll jump on the same question because uh, yes. addressing that. There's two issues. One is if you're creating something for yourself, okay, you know, and they might say, oh, so-and-so had this idea. And that it's not like you can't go out and perform it unless it's clearly, as we've talked about, uh, you've taken a routine directly off of someone's proprietary and then you're pushing the ethical line. It really pushes – it pushes when you're going to sell it. It's just like you said with the pig thing. You know, at the moment you're going to bring it to market, you it's the the responsibility is on you or me or Gino or anyone to to make sure that you're not stepping on anyone's toes. And you know, living or dead, I always try to give credit where it's due. If I can find cool. out, and look, I'll admit I'm not nearly an expert to the degree of some others. And I mean, a few examples is when I released the chameleon knots, which I know is Pavel's effect. Uh, I made, like you said, with uh, your situation where I made a deal with Pavel. And I said, look, every one of these I sell, you get $1. And it was simply yeah. a gentleman's handshake. And over the years, he made $500 for doing nothing. Every time I lecture yep. and perform on it and talk about it, even now I'm saying this idea is from Pavel. When I was even going to teach, I've got my own version of the classic color Monty that I've been doing oh. for years. And I didn't care because I'm just performing. It doesn't matter. The moment I thought I wanted to put it in my lecture and teach it, I contacted Arthur Emerson personally. In fact, I found I caught him at the FISM in 2012. I oh. showed it to him. I said, I'm giving you full credit. Are you good with that? And he was just like, I love it. Put, you know, make sure my name's on, you know, t mention my name and don't worry about giving me any any royalties, you know, because I said, look, I'm not selling a product. I just want to give a version. And he was perfectly happy. But as you said, to me, it was the right thing to do. So you have yes. to have some level of personal ethics to kind of go, does this really seem right? Because, you know, it's not an exact line, but, you know, do your best to at least give credit if someone else has come up with it. And as you said, I'll often consult with those who I know, no more, mm. you know, and yeah. the magic groups. Yeah. Here's the funny thing. I'll just jump on this. It's surprising to me. Now, you've mentioned this in like the magicians only the Facebook group. I don't understand why people ask blanket questions rather than going, hey, Jay Scott Barry, you're an expert in this. What do you think? Or, hey, Sean, it's like a big room. Why? Why not say I'd like to ask the experts on this? I'd like to ask Gino because I know he's one. And literally just in the post and every one of us, I will tell you, if you simply are polite, we will come back and we'll help you. Yeah. But yeah. The irreverence and the dissing. And the, I mean, one guy was jumping all over the place. I mean, the other day going, your whole claim to fame is wrapping a gimmick with tape. And I'm just like, boy, that just shows your ignorance. If you think that's the only thing uh, I've done in my whole career, it was like, oh, my God, you, you think I'm going to be polite to this guy? I mean, he's yeah, like trying absolutely. to diss me when wow, it, all he had to do I didn't was see that one. and ask oh the right God. question. And I would have been right there to help him. Yeah. And just like her, the other thing he's saying, is, hey, well, man, he's asking the right questions. The other thing is as well, if you actually tag somebody's name who you know happens to be quite knowledgeable in a certain subject, it will eliminate the hundred ridiculous, ridiculous comments that are totally uneducated drivel, you know. And right. I think who some, somebody posted recently about, I think it was, uh, I think it was a uh, CP, Mr. Craig Petty, on one of his mega rants. And he posted recently about people not giving good advice. And this is a thing that bugs me. You know, you'll get a hundred posts to a question and 90% of it is drivel. 
And yeah. you've got to spend 30, 40 years as a professional in this game or on a particular subject to be classed as somebody that knows what you're talking about. And because otherwise, all it comes down to is an opinion. And sometimes the opinion is ridiculous. But the OP or the question asker, how do they know it's ridiculous? They're asking a question because they don't know. So a lot of the time you're swimming through this minefield of utter drivel rubbish, like close up questions. You know, what do I do in this situation? And you get people that have never done a close up gig in their life making right. these uninformed opinions. Well, the, the question asker doesn't know. Yeah, wow. in that case, to me, again, I just watch these things and I think, well, why don't you say, can I please have the experts in strolling magic or in restaurant magic? Or, yes. you know, we've got even in this, this list here, you know, people who have actually spent years doing it. They're going to give a very detailed professional response and they don't want to I don't want to waste my time being the target of all these wannabes who want to take me down uh, because I give an honest reply to a question. So I don't, nine, yeah. 99 times out of 100, I just scroll by. And I think uh, all yeah. you had to do, I'm an expert. I'm probably the world's expert on a bunch of subjects. Thumb tips, TTs, yep. Yep. grief. Yep. I watch these mindless annoying. posts and I make a tiny thing and someone disses me and I'm going, you have no idea who you're talking to. You're fucking oh, talking to the world's grandmaster of TTs, and, yep. and you're you, you don't have a clue that I'm trying to help this person. So I just like. And what's really annoying? What's really <laughs> annoying on this is the fact that it's got to the stage, for example, where you personally, where you personally feel the need to just scroll back, scroll by, and not want to help. Because the right. whole concept of these magic groups should be a place where people help. Um, right. Because we've all, for example, Jay, myself and a host of others, you know, we are getting on in years, but we've had very, very successful careers as professional performers. We have been there. We have done it not just for a couple of years. We've done it for like myself, four decades, Jay, even longer. We've we've done it all. So therefore, we have this knowledge. However, when we were young, there was no such thing as the Internet. Our, our information would come from either just learning it dry. If we were lucky enough to have some form of mentor back then, we could be taught stuff. But we would have local magic clubs where we would go there once every, you know, once every two weeks on a Tuesday night. <laughs> you know, now it's there ready every single day at the drop of a hat. You can be at a gig with your phone and ask a question. Oh, I'm at a gig. I've got a situation come up. What, what would you do with this? It's mm. crazy. If the people who know don't want to answer, <laughs> well, uh, then you mentioned Paul Gordon, and he's another one that I would put in that same category, as it, like you're saying yeah. with you and I. This, he's yeah. one of the top all round card magicians oh, in the goodness. world. And I watch him get so little respect among some of the younger youngins. And I'm yes. thinking, if you had any smarts, you'd be asking him the right questions and learning. I mean, here's a guy who has so much experience. And, oh, and my goodness. Yeah. Imagine if, if someone actually got on one of these groups and said, hey, hey, Paul Gordon, I, I'm working on this. Do you know about this? And literally tags him in the post. Paul, like you or I, would be very gracious to come in and go, wow, oh, yes. thank you. I'm happy to help you with this. And then it becomes a discussion about you start at the higher level and sure some other pros can come in but the idea sure. of of everyone who thinks they know something and then of course yeah. the infighting and all the other nonsense and you just think like yeah. look I, i'm not going to squabble with the chooks here i'm not i don't yeah. even and paul's the same way it's like good grief he doesn't have anything to prove at this point uh you know but we're, oh, we're sort of obligated <laughs> to assist when the question is asked respectfully so absolutely. yeah it's a tricky absolutely. subject it is. I mean, and it's such a sad thing, mate. And I will say this and I'll, I'll say this. I'll, and I, I don't mind saying this because, you know, you are a friend. It is so sad, so sad that you personally feel eh, I can't be bothered to write comments and help a lot of the time in post because of the knowledge that you do have. And it's such a bad thing that we are in this situation now. And, you know, it's you're not the only one, you know, like you say, yeah. Paul Gordon's another one.
I mean, I, in, in, I get fed up with the haters. I just think I don't need to waste my time. And then it's not only that, then it's having to come back and back and back and then defend yourself. And oh. you know, people come out of the woodwork and again, you look at their things, you think they've never even done a single professional show and they think they're oh. going to get in the ring with me. It's like the, the classic yeah. stories of Bruce Lee when he would walk around Hong Kong and all these people would come up and go, come on, come on, I'm going to fight you. And he'd be like, I, 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 get out. Of, you know, I don't have the time to fight with beginners because you've got a big <laughs> ego. And that's how yeah, I feel. Yeah, now, you know, it, yeah, you can't hey, I tell you, now, finishing <laughs> it on this note about literally <laughs> about wasting time, I've got to tell you this. Anyone that's got my personal Facebook friend and that popped me up on the wall, they might notice that yesterday, last night, I made a personal rant, which is totally unlike me. Something happened in my personal life, and I thought, screw it, I'm going to chuck it to the to the to the to the Facebook to see what it feels like to get it off my shoulder to vent publicly, and. Actually speaking, I typed it all out, and I suppose typing it all out was like getting it out of me onto a journal, and it didn't bother me that much. I'm a bit thick-skinned for this, you know? But when I posted it on Facebook, over the next three or four hours, I had so many comments, so many, oh, we care, we care, we care, which is nice. Don't get me wrong, it's really, really nice. But... I had to, as Jay said, I had to keep coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back, writing more posts. It wasted so much of my time just thanking people for caring. And it was just like, I thought about it afterwards. I thought, well, that's really nice. And I really appreciate all the sentiments, all the care or everything else. But goodness me, didn't it half waste a load of my time? So I learned something. I will not be airing my dirty laundry <laughs> on a Facebook post ever again. <laughs> Waste of time. Yeah, great. It was a nice kick to my ego to have all these people giving me care and saying these lovely comments and stuff like that. And some people like, for example, the great magician Tom Stone from Sweden, who is a huge articulate guy very very intelligent guy he uses lots of big words and he knows what they mean yeah. but more than i he wrote this really long detailed post and tom if you ever watch this mate i love you to bits i love your country i live there but i have no bloody clue what you're talking about i don't understand <laughs> it <laughs> i thought look and you saw my reply uh i wanted yes. to get around to the Di Vernon thing because yeah, it was like, to me, I, that was one of the greatest quotes is when Di Vernon, he, he saw how much I was getting dissed as a kid and how much, as you say, people backstabbing and all that. And he just went, yeah. says, they don't Doesn't try matter. to attack yeah. you oh, yet unless you're running with yeah. the ball. Really and it was just I a buck, buck up, like you said, say, quit whining, <laughs> get on with it. Yeah, it wasn't a, oh, 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 oh. He says, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and yeah, come I on. really don't it's care. I don't as well, care. You know? Anyway, <laughs> you know. Okay, what, what do we got up said, the thing that said, Yeah, I, I don't know. I tell you, I'm getting bleeped out from my phones now. People are messaging me about, on my personal messenger, about what we're talking about here, which is really quite bizarre. But hey, there you go. Never mind. Um, I'll deal with that later. Uh, well, we've kind of gone over time again. Um, I was going to uh, just do one more little uh, life on the road, but I also had another feature. So screw it. We'll go a little bit longer. Why not? Yeah, that's so, right. I'll give you spotlight. Why don't you take over and do a couple of the things you have set? There yeah, we go. Yeah, I've got, you are I've got off another and one. So now, this is another little piece that I want to add in because uh, something I've noticed recently within the magic world is uh, you have the big magic companies such as your penguins and your vanishings and what have you. Um, and people, you know, they go in and they buy the new releases daily, 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 daily. Well, actually speaking, that's just the way that the magic world is. However, of course, the magic world is filled with what we call classics. There are certain areas of magic which, and certain effects in magic, which literally anyone that studies the art of magic 
should know. Now, this is not just certain effects. This is certain gimmicks that have been created or certain routines. People should have a basic understanding of these. So what I'm going to do each week in Genomania is run a clip of myself doing a particular effect, a classic, or a role of one of the masters that I happen to find. This week, it is one of the masters, the great guy. He's a very, very good friend of Jay's, the one and only Michael Amar. And uh, I'm going to run this effect. It was one of the uh, world's greatest magic effects. It was done a long time ago. Here's Michael Amar at the Magic Castle in Los Angeles performing an effect, which I'll tell you about just after this. Here it is now. Hope you enjoy it. I would you like to see the Million Dollar Mystery. Million Dollar Mystery. The amazing thing about the Million Dollar Mystery is that it only uses six dollars. <laughs> but I guess they call it the Million Dollar Mystery because an amazing thing happens using just six dollars. Here's what happens. I'll take the two bills, the five dollar bill, the one dollar bill. And I'll fold them up very slowly and I'll place them into my hand so that no funny stuff takes place. And I'm going to remove just one of those bills, okay? I close my hands. Okay, if I have uh, the $1 bill here, what does that leave here? And if I have the one here and over here is the five. The only thing is there's the five and there's the one. And I guess that's why they call this the million dollar mystery because the bills change places. But a lot of people don't know what to look for when something happens once, so I'll do it again. This will give you a second chance to watch everything. As I take the five, I take the one, and I fold them up just like this. I, in fact, I'll place them into your hand. Perhaps you can hold out your hand for me. I'll place it right here. Close your hand over it. Turn your hand upside down. Hang on to it. Now, I'm going to reach in, lighten it just enough to allow me to reach in to take out one of the bills, and you hang on to the other bill. Okay, if I take the one into my hand just like this, I close my hand and I reach and I throw, Are you, but you feel the five, right? Yes, sure do. If I reach and I throw, <laughs> I but first I reach and I take, there we'll see, I've got the $5 bill. You must therefore have the $1 bill. Open your hand and there you go. <laughs> Unfold it, examine everything. <laughs> and that's why they call it the million dollar mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Bravo, no. bravo. Bravo. Fabulous. Bravo. Mr. Amar, you are a legend, sir. Legend, marvelous, marvelous. Now, okay, so why am I including that? That let me just tell you first, that is an effect, and I, I've got to uh, pronounce the gentleman's name correctly. That is an, an effect by a man called George Hample. Hample, and it's called Be Switched. Now where the special part of that why am i playing that we're living in a term a time nowadays well even though we're a, a lot of the time in a cashless society over the last 10 years or so there has been so many bill switches transpositions there's so many out there blank paper to build so many on the market well be switched I like to think of being one of the granddaddies of bill gimmicks. It is so clean. When you do it, like Michael Amar did it, then you literally have a five in one hand, a one in the other hand, the hands go nowhere near each other, and boom, they change. It's that clean. And it is the cleanest, cleanest possible transposition ever. Well, that is available. It's actually on DVD two of Michael Amar's Money Miracle set. And even if you particularly never wanted to do that effect using that method, the knowledge that you would have from understanding how that opens up doors, it's like zoom away we go, a zoom away. Having the knowledge of how to do that takes you off to the stratosphere. It's something that everyone should know. Every magician should know. So that is the end of, uh, of the first one. That's Be Switched by George Hample, uh, performed by Michael Amar. And you know you're very good friends with Michael Amar. I'm dear friends. Michael and I have been friends since uh, he came out to, the, to Los Angeles, to the Magic Castle, 
probably 1980 uh, from West Virginia. Mm. I was there doing, my, I was again, one of the youngest members performing there, the youngest member at the time, but he and I became friends. We were at the FISM together. We've become dear friends uh, ever since. I yeah. will mention that that was filmed at Louis Falenga's house in Lake Tahoe, not the Magic Castle. Oh. That was Ooh, actually, sorry. no, no, that's all right. I just, just yeah, so everyone yeah, yeah, knows yeah. when you recognize that backdrop, yeah. that was the, actually the fireplace in the living area of Louis Falenga's house. Uh, he was the producer of all the, um, uh, those, I think the L&L publishing, right? All of those, those yeah. videos that then to DVDs, a uh, huge volume of product that uh, he produced over the many years. So yeah, Absolutely, great, yeah. great magician, no, great effect. See, interesting well you say that. Yeah, well, interesting you say that because obviously, of all the L and L's and the world's greatest magic and everything else, they had a very much of a standard benchmark of performing the close-up parlor library. You've got the obligatory close-up half moon close-up table, and it's very close to a backdrop. And of course, actually speaking for us non-Americans that didn't, you know, back in those days, go to those filmings. To us, they kind of look all the same, and so it's interesting to know that they weren't all in the same venue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Lewis would yeah. often, uh, his thing is that he would, uh, he had this, he had set up this amazing house in Lake Tahoe and uh, like one of the coolest places in the world. And he would bring magicians in over a weekend or something and try to film as much as possible in the shortest period of time. And like with Penguin, wow. when you do the Penguin lecture, you walk in and yes. the team is there. You've got, I mean, the camera yeah. people are there, the editing people are there, they're all, they're, they're pros. Your job as a magician is to present. You have an audience ready to go. Of course, they're, they're basically paid volunteers, but they're a good, they turn yeah. out to be a really good audience. They, you know, you want people, at least for these performances, to, you know, like that. They react, they're going to be polite. Uh, oh. So, yes, yeah, an incredible, uh, again, body of information that is available uh, by Michael and almost virtually every other major magician that uh, Louis Falango oh, put yeah. together. Well, I have, yeah. I have to say, I mean, this is where I'm going to be pulling from for this thing, for this classic. I mean, you know, we talk about in magic, we talk about, you know, obviously the, the most comprehensive course in magic, of course, is tar the Tarbell books, because that literally, and I won't say even just skims the surface. I mean, it, it's a certainly a, a, a medium, not necessarily a deep dive into every area of magic, but certainly a medium, a medium tip into the bucket. Um, but of course, there's other things. You know, the beginning magic, the Mark Wilson book. Well, classic, absolutely brilliant. However, from a DVD standpoint, I am a huge, even now, for my own recreational, because I, I mean, as a magician, for a lifetime magician, I still love watching magic, but I still adore door watching the world's greatest magic DVD sets, which were L and L, because it's literally every classic of magic done by masters of that their own versions of that classic. And there is no better training ground on a DVD basis than that. Because you watch, you know, you watch, for example, out of this world, you've got you watch Bill Malone, you watch a whole host of others doing their versions of a classic card plot, what do you take out of it at the end? You go, wow, well, he's doing it that way with his style. He's doing it that way with his style. I should be looking at it from my style and creating my own thing. And that is amazing. But that's what I'm pulling from from these. But Excellent. talking of, you know, you talk about paid audiences, of course, the Magic Castle. Bottom left seat, the guy. <laughs> and as a Brit, I still, after all these years, I forget his name, but he was the, uh, you know, the, the colored gentleman that was there with the great big smile in every single world's greatest magic video ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's become one of the, the biggest biggest jokes in magic. Well, not in a bad way, of course, but it's been a, a nice, fun thing in the magic world of the, forever. But, uh, but yeah, well, look, that wraps it up. I mean, we've gone way over again. I've got more, but, you know, we'll save it till next time. <laughs> so, um, okay. I'll shout out to Seth, Seth Apita, our friend from the Philippines. He says Michael Amar, Hello. one of his favorite magicians, looked up to. Like, you can't go. There's a handful of just the top, top magicians, and clearly Michael has been, now, he's one of them. 
No question. So. When, Seth, when Seth says he's going to look up to him, because obviously Seth being a Filipino is short and Michael Amar is really tall. So does he mean he's <laughs> looking up to him like that? Uh, I don't know. I think Is that really looks like <laughs> All right. Well, thank well, you, Gino, on behalf of everyone watching. I will uh, just thank you. I love the two new sections. Well done. Yeah, I love how you're really yeah, putting think, the time and energy you're name. putting into these preparation wise. People should be paying for them, let's be honest. So those who are watching them, just take a moment to appreciate, you know, that the we are doing this for the service of the art. We're doing our very best to to uh, very much. Do, to like, uh, we appreciate your feedback because you see this. We're trying to make this as interactive as possible. So thank you. Oh, totally. Please share the word. Please let people know uh, that we're doing this. So final words, Mr. Deville. Well, thank you once again for tuning in. Uh, remember, we've got the quiz starting right now. All the pretty Christmas pictures are over at devillemagic.net. The quiz is going on. Even if you're not interested in shopping at the moment, go and have a go at the quiz. Uh, test your magic knowledge. Have some fun with it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'll see you next week. Um, so thanks again for tuning in. And thank you once again for all the support. So me, Gina Deville, signing off. Saying, see you next time. Toodle pip. Cheerio, mate. <laughs> Bye. Okay, and that leaves it just with me here. I will give a final reminder about the the couple of new downloads. I know the Wonder Workshop. I I just want to really emphasize that that's so timely with the Christmas holidays. If you're not doing that in your shows and you have shows, I'm thinking like, well, why not? Uh, so just a quick reminder that that is available through DeVille Magic. You can download it instantly. A lot of this stuff you can be performing, you know, within by certainly by shows within a few days. It doesn't take massive amounts of effort to learn this, but they're really, really valuable designs and ideas. It just opens up this whole new area of of magic that has really only been filled by animal balloons. So it gives an entire you just we're, you know breaking ground on this. So appreciate your support on that one. Uh, as I say, we're um, I'm looking. I'm just considering how the map out the first part of next year. Uh, there is some zoom storming to kind of continue that uh, and run a new series of those again. As I say, the science magic is like on my topical list. The certification of Wonder Works as well as some other ones so these live zoom lectures and also i've got obviously lectures and workshops available to clubs uh, in fact in a couple of days i'm doing uh, our friend jonas in sweden i'm doing my extreme tt uh, lecture slash workshop for his group uh, so if you've got a group or you know someone the one of the ways you can support us is just pass that along I mean any any gigs I get I'm on complete lockdown so I'm going entirely into virtual that means virtual shows I can perform virtual shows for anyone any group anywhere in the world as well as teaching uh, whether it's private sessions which are very reasonable uh, I'm keeping my private rates up until the end of the year which have been ridiculously uh inexpensive uh they will be going up so anyone who wants to jump on as a mentee or student for then please let me know and i'll be happy to hold the low lockdown rates for you uh but yeah spread the word appreciate your support all good we are cruising full on into uh this coming year again thank you very much to gino thank you all uh for uh, joining us on this and we'll see you as we say on the flip side so here comes the cool music oh yeah we are out of here